Hello? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm using Google Voice for some reason. It's saying that I have a 646 area code. I'm an American calling from Canada. Oh, that's weird. Um, okay. So I don't always get good reception in my house because um, at and is weird in Canada. Okay. Um, All right. Anyways, thank you, Sam, for taking my call. My name is Ben. Um, I just want to say I really appreciate uh, your ability on the show to focus on policy education as opposed to talking points. Um, my question is, uh, well, first I'll give you a little bit of background. I consider myself a socialist because I find the far left to be most compatible with my ideological and policy goals. But when I encourage people I know to run as a delegate to the state convention or to run for political office, they talk about how U.S. party politics serve as a distraction with the U.S. and Democratic Party operating as another head of the same beast. And I don't totally disagree with the points they make. You know, like Truman established NATO and the CIA, JFK did the Bay of Pigs, um, even like with Bernie Sanders, you know, they'll bring up his um, vote to bomb U Yugoslavia, which I think is like really complicated and not at all equivalent to like, for example, Reagan's role in Africa. Um, but my question is, how do we convince leftists that Republicans are worse than Democrats? And how do we convince leftists that insurgent candidacies in the Democratic Party are more effective than the Green Party or a group like PSL? I mean, I feel like people get that message. I, I, I yeah. mean, well, I, they're not necessarily in. I, I mean, first off, I would just say, you know, historically speaking, um, there it, it, if it is n none of these decisions that you're making about, you know, supporting and, and again, you know, I think that with the caveat that electoral politics are not the uh, the end all be all. Um, and obviously all the other work has to continue on, you know, in, 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 on a parallel and, and, and for the most part, a more prominent track, I think, during the course of the year. Uh, but there's also, you know, sort of legislative stuff. The, the, the bottom line is just like the um, there are differences. There are there are material differences. Two hundred, for instance, in Oklahoma. The other day, 200,000 more yeah. people just got health care under Medicaid. Yeah. And it's not just under Medicaid. It's under the Affordable Care Act. Now, the if I, but even specifically on foreign policy is like where I find it more hard to convince people because uh, material benefits to Americans are obvious. But like I, I thought you actually did a good a really good piece with that interview. Um, how does the CIA destroy lefties? Um I, but just like trying to get people to understand that, like, for a broader left coalition, it's not your, you know, white privilege or whatever, um, you know, trying to support Bernie Sanders over Donald Trump. Look, there's no doubt. There's no or even Joe Biden over Donald there, Trump. There's no doubt that in terms of foreign policy, um, the distinctions are 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 even less dramatic. However. With that said, um, the chances of getting someone like Matt Duss closer to the levers of power in the State Department under uh, Joe Biden, Matt Duss being, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders foreign policy advisor, are much higher than they are in in a uh, Donald Trump uh, administration. Um, even if you look at like Chris Van Hollen the other day, a um, the junior senator from uh, from Delaware. And uh, he came out with a, you know, it is, it's not, again, this is not where you want to end up, but in terms of like an intermediate position, uh, the Pentagon cannot expend funds on behalf of expanding the annex, uh, the annexation of, of, of the West Bank by the Israelis. You're, there's no one in the Republican Party who's going to say that. Yeah. Not an elected that's, leader. That's and he is a middling, you know, um, a Democrat. I mean, it is going to take time, but I've seen the difference in the in the Democratic Party. And I would say probably in 10 to 15 years, the Democratic Party, uh, if they are in the position of power, maybe it'll happen even before then, uh, will not uh, will not be supporting Israel in the way that it, the country will not be supporting Israel in the way that it does uh, now. Uh, unless there has been some material change, and and you think leftists, 
sorry. Well, I mean, I think like, you know, uh, again, like the differences are, 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 are not as, um, they, you know, uh, the contrast is not as stark in foreign policy, uh, but, but it is there. And it's certainly, there's just simply what? more, uh, more power that the, the left has on, on left, uh, you know, on, on left leaning left of center, um, uh, politicians. It's just a fact. And it's worth pointing out the symbiotic relationship between the worst elements in the Democrats and the Trump administration, because Trump can do things yeah. like the Venezuela stuff. And, you know, even Pelosi's clapping that, but the, the responsibilities on the GOP, and I think we're in a much better position when the responsibilities on somebody like Barack Obama, where we can say, hey, actually, droning is really bad and we should stop that as opposed to like, you know, where, you know, we know they all agree. So let's not let the, you know, the worst part of it leap. And, and listen, I, I, I firmly believe and I, there is that it, despite and I know exactly where Bill Clinton was on this. I know all the rhetoric. I know all of it. But the Democrats. And even if you want to just do it on based of, uh, you know, putting aside intent, the Democrats, a, Al Gore would have never been able to attack Iraq. Yeah. No way. Even I don't think he would have wanted to but there is no way that he would have been able to, I'm sorry. It just, it wouldn't have happened just because of the nature of our politics. Um, Do you think and, when and, it comes and, to getting like, an obligation for leftists to get Donald Trump out of office, do you think sometimes it's overstated um, the degree to which he empowers right-wing neo-fascist elements globally? Do I think it's overstated? No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. That, that, that's, that's what I try to convince people. I, I, mean, I think that there's a very good argument that you wouldn't get Bolsonaro in um, uh, in 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 uh, in office were it not for Donald Trump's existence. I don't know Do about you, Orban. Like the way Orban's rhetoric has worsened. Yeah, like of course, of course. Collar, you know, do you have a specific leftist in mind? Uh, like, because I'm curious, like, what their information sources are that they're impervious to this sort yeah. of stuff. Well, I'm speaking mostly from a background of growing up in Texas, so I feel like the left is very dysfunctional there as it's really fragmented and isolated. Mm. And at least four of the people I know get their information from the Jimmy, the Jimmy Dore show. Okay, which, well, there we know, go. Whole, <laughs> well, there you there go. There it is. There you go. Uh, can uh, I... I, you should, that's, that's what you lead with <laughs> in this conversation. Yeah. Um, I have a couple thoughts about this. Um, I think the ballot line question is a pretty boring one, right? It's been settled. Any leftist organization that wants to engage seriously in electoralism as a tactic is probably going to have to use the Democratic Party's ballot line at some point in time, you know, with a few exceptions. Like if you have a large movement behind you, like Kashama Sawant and Socialist Alternative running in a local election, oh, you might be doubt. able to win that way. Um, and like I would never deny that there are material differences between having Democrats and Republicans in power, right? Like the Medicaid example that you just cited, Sam, is very real. But um, the goal of any socialist movement is not only to get a slightly larger percentage of the population on Medicaid, right? Our goal is to overthrow yeah. capitalism and take back the world from the people who stole it. And in terms of that, I think electoralism as a tactic, I'm very agnostic on it. Like, I think there's not going to be any way to know what relationship it will or will not have to the social revolution, except for in retrospect. So I'm glad that people are trying things, but it is also fair to express uh, skepticism and ask questions about it and try to justify it in terms of our long-term project as well. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, yeah. I mean, for me personally, um, if the social revolution, the aspiration for the social revolution gets in the way of material benefits for people's lives now uh, or in the short term, then I will defer to, the the latter goal as opposed to the former i mean and but i understand that there are people who have different agendas uh but 
the and like you know i only have a problem when the argument is is that our so our our, our long term uh, revolutionary goals um, are inhibited by uh, letting a little air out of the tire and providing a little less immiseration for people. Um, I I'm not down with that. Well, I think usually yeah. there's no conflict there. Although I mean, there are you some could... people who see a conflict, right? I mean, I mean that's that's like you definitely, know. and and that's mostly what I'm talking about is people that like like there's this notion that if you do engage in any degree of electoralism, that that somehow, you know, is a distraction from direct action, which pretty much everybody I know that is like a hardcore Bernie cred actually goes to a lot of protests, some of them radical. Well, there's not, I mean, you can go to a protest you know, you, you, you're, you're uh, sending in your mail-in ballot is not going to interfere with your, your, uh, your actual, your protest, but there are people who believe that, any benefit that is provided today that is um, uh, insufficient inhibits the ability to bring about the, um, you know, a, a, a political revolution, a social revolution. Accelerationists. A, a accelerationists. And, and that is, you know, and that, I'm, you know, that's where, uh, totally. you know, uh, I, I part company with those people. Jimmy Dore, I wouldn't even include in that. Yeah, no, uh, he because, does not have a coherent yeah, anti-capitalist politics. He doesn't have a coherent politics, period. <laughs> like, I mean, it's not even a, a question of being anti-capitalist. He doesn't, he is, um, it's performative. It is, um, it is uh, to generate clicks in some instances. In others, it's just him working out his own personal issues. Uh, and, and, and how you know this is because he will not allow himself to be challenged in any way because he doesn't yeah. have the ability to be challenged. I've given him multiple opportunities and he refuses. Um, and, and he retreats in those instances. If he had a coherent uh, political vision, uh, you'd be able to question him and he would allow Hashtag himself to debate, be- Sam. Well, I mean, honestly, I mean, it's, it's pathetic. It's pathetic what he does because all he does is disempower people. And it really is more yeah. about his own personal issues, I think, uh, than anything else. Um, and you know, the idea that his perspective on Bernie Sanders changed when Bernie Sanders wouldn't come on a show. I mean, give me a, an effing break. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this I mean, is a I'm, good risk. sympathetic to feeling burned by the democratic party. Like I was at the Texas state convention and I saw officials throw out, um, petitions that met the signature threshold because they were calling for progressive change. Yeah. I mean, look, there's no doubt that the democratic party as an institution is um is <laughs> is not um is in opposition to um genuine progressivism there is no there's no doubt about that but in terms of what is practical their opposition is not as strong as the republican ones i mean the republicans are not even in opposition it is so uh, far afield that it does that you know have to perceive itself in opposition to progressivism. It it has a much like broader uh, opposition, and so you know you go. The, there are two, for for better or for worse, there are two major, particularly when you're talking in national politics, you're talking about the federal government. There are two major. Uh, there are two vehicles that you can take to getting there. I mean even. You can ask this as of, of the socialist in the in the uh, in the Senate who caucuses with Democrats, who has always caucused with Democrats. Um, yeah. There's two vehicles and whether you need to identify as a Democrat, I don't care. You know, who cares how you identify? But the bottom line is yeah. um, there's only one that has any potential that doesn't guarantee anything. It's just a question of potential, any potential to deliver leftist uh inspired, influenced policy uh, to help lessen, immiserate people and hopefully rise, you know, raise them, raise them up or make their lives in some way easier and more fulfilling. And that's just the fact. Another. And, yeah. And I'm, any, I'm, any socialist just, movement ahead. that does not concern itself with people's immediate material needs is probably not going to win over the mass working class base that we need in order to affect real change on a grand scale. Yeah, like how are people going to care about what's going on in Yemen if 
like their mom has cancer and they can't even pay their rent. Well, and another approach to, is to ask these people like, okay, you don't believe in electoralism. Well, what direct action are you doing and what results has that got? Because if it's just like I'm agitating against Debbie Wasserman Schultz and the Green Party and for the Green Party, like then they're clowns and like they have been misled into exactly the kind of disempowerment that we always say Jimmy Dore is doing to people. Uh, because that is just a complete dead end, for folks. Yeah, I, I will never trash somebody for uh, shifting their focus from electoralism to more radical kinds of direct action, if that's what they think is going to make more of a change. That's certainly where my focus is. But, you know, don't stand in the way of people who want to try electoralism, because we don't know what's going to work at the end of the day. And anyone who claims to know what's going to work, like... Here's how we get socialism. You just have to listen to me and do A, B, and C. You should not trust that person. Ben, appreciate Absolutely. the call. Thanks for the call. Appreciate Thank it. You.